here we are boys and girls welcome to another stream of processing uh, programming and processing so yesterday uh, we have um, tried to make something that would get an XML from a web page reporting the most recent earthquakes the, the web page sent us an XML file, we have passed it and got the coordinates and the region and the magnitude of the latest earthquake. And I said that in practice, once, once the gadget for this will be done and made, uh, I will not use a repetitive query of a web page and download do doing the, the the whole overhead and downloading the the whole XML. Um, I'd rather use a web socket and every time because because it it can get quite boring if I if I if I'd have the XML query right so. I ask the web page, send me the most current web earthquake. Then, one minute later, I ask, send me the most current earthquake. But earthquakes don't happen that often. So maybe there is no new earthquake for 10 minutes. Yet, I keep sending a query each minute. And each minute I get the same XML as I got before. And I'm just generating traffic and getting XMLs I've gotten eight minutes ago. So querying repetitively is not the right thing to do. Um, the other problem with querying repetitively, why is that a bad idea, is that if you, if you have a certain gap or, or a, like a break or a delay which has to pass before you post another query like let, let's let's say one minute only then wait one minute and then ask again if there is uh, any if there are any new earthquakes happened in the past minute sometimes earthquakes happen uh, in a quick succession so that once I ask I got the latest earthquake then I wait a minute and within this minute it can rarely happen that there are two or even three new earth earthquake registered somewhere in the world. And I miss these because I wait one minute and maybe uh, after the minute is over a fourth earthquake will happen and only that will get reported as the most current one. So I, I, I'll miss earthquakes. So that's why a web socket is the superior a solution, a web socket. So I have learned just yesterday. I had no idea what web sockets are, but web sockets were created because people saw the need of a bidirectional data transfer between the client and the server. Usually, when you browse a web page, it's only a monodirectional information flow. So you you ask the server to to serve you a web page the server has the web page you download it and you display it and the server doesn't practically get anything from you except for some cookies I mean not even cookies they are I don't know what it, what it gets for you some practically nothing but sometimes you want a bidirectional uh, communication and so people developed web sockets where the client can send the server some something and the connection is kept upright so they can communicate whenever they need and they don't need to send the the overhead overhead of establishing the communication again and again so once we once we create a WebSocket, we, we can understand it as like a stable 
bidirectional communication connection to the server and there is a there is a norm how each WebSocket message has to look like how is it sent in how many in transmission packets it is divided and so on and so on there are rules about that to which which fulfill the WebSocket protocol standard and that's basically what it is so we have imported a library for WebSockets we have defined our WebSocket or an object which we will and a string list is just for uh, th this this is my my own code uh, but most of it is not my own code <laughs> I've basically written like two or four lines of this everything else comes from a fellow uh, fellow processing programmer who, who has answered my questions and concerns in the forums um, I'll get to that later so this is just a string list gathering messages to output in the console later we can ignore these settings that just some window size no loop I don't understand why there is no loop here text the line well, let's forget about this the most important message is here so we create an instance so this we, de we define a very here up here we've defined the variable type no no it's not a variable type variable type is this we have declared that we will need, we will later use a vari variable WebSocket WSC. And here we, this variable is declared and here it is defined. Here we define the WebSocket as a new instance of the WebSocket client object. That is obviously a WebSocket client and WebSocket server. We are not concerned with the WebSocket server, the server already exists, it's on this Seismic Portal server, so we only create the WebSocket client. This is just like the, the, the self, the, the, the instance of the program. So, and, and this is the URL to the server, um, and more specifically this is the URL to where the WebSocket server is. So this server has a web server, FTP server or whatnot, and also a WebSocket server. And there's a special WebSocket protocol. It's, it's not HTTP, it's not hypertext protocol, it's a WebSocket protocol. That, that's the communication channel. So, and, and that's our new WebSocket. Now, this is just a function to draw some output window, which will then... Uh, display the messages and this is a special feature of the WebSocket most of the time the WebSocket connection between our client and the server will be doing will not do anything it will be just silence but whenever the server registers a, an earthquake it will send a small data packet containing the information about the earthquake through this WebSocket connection down to our client. We don't even have to ask for anything. It will just, the server will just send a message. And that's the, the sending this in either direction is called a WebSocket event. And this function basically tells our program what to do if there is a WebSocket event so we know that the only sort of WebSocket event we will get is a message from the server containing a bunch of information about the, the latest earthquake so in this case and, and we also know that the server on the WebSocket protocol doesn't send the information packed in XML format but with in a JSON format and it's similar to XML, but it's something, com you know, it's, well, it's similar to a certain degree, but it's fundamentally different from XML. 
Um, so it, it sends a JSON object. Like a JSON object contains, again, structured information, structured information of um, where did this earthquake happen, what's its magnitude, what sort of institution detected it, what was the detection method, uh, what was the time it was detected at, and so on and so on. So structured information, like like you can imagine it as a as a class, as an instance of a class object, uh, as a uh, an instance of a class. That that sort of structured information. So. That's a that's a JSON object. So we get this JSON object as a text message, but we will parse it as a JSON object. So from the string we get, we will create a JSON object called object. And now this being a JSON object, we can extract the the, the relevant data from it in a very easy way. We can navigate to the data section, to the geometry section, and to the coordinates section and get the three coordinates, latitude, longitude, and depth, how deep under the surface uh, the, the earthquake happened. And so, so that's the p vector. I don't know what a p vector is. Uh, I'd have to see p vector, p vector, p vector. WebSocket processing uh, reference p vector. What is a p vector? Since I didn't program this, I'm not really familiar with that. A class to describe two or three dimensional vector, specifically an Euclidean. Okay, X, Y, Z for. Mm -hmm. Position, ah, position vector. Velocity, X, Y, Z. Yeah, okay, it can do a bunch of stuff. Right, so we get the SP vector. And received messages is a field which will be output in the console window and in the and in the um, in the program window. that right I think so well the problem with this if we run this is that it sort of works but sort of doesn't work either so the background color is randomized but we have established a WebSocket connection to the server and now we just wait a couple of minutes whether we will get get a message from the server and here I have the time to answer your questions what forum are you using for letting answer your coding question well since it, this is a question specific to the processing language it's the processing forum as a forum on processing.org but if I have a general programming question I usually uh, go to stack exchange stack exchange is, is really a good a good site with lots of experts and it's not only coding uh, coding hey, hey hey look so while we were talking uh, a message arrived so this is how a JSON look like right so um, we, we got after 53 seconds or 53,000 milliseconds we got this message action create data geometry type coordinates the, the, the type feature ID this properties last update this time 
magnitude type is ml i don't know what that means event type ke don't know what that means longitude latitude depth and magnitude time of the event and somewhere in the syria region it is so and what it did so so this print line message caused that the whole JSON message is printed out in the console just for reference but the actual program window uh, is displaying here new message arrived at 53 seconds and it it basically grabbed the most important information this and this is latitude 36 longitude 40 and depth minus six kilometers Oh, yeah, like six kilometers under the surface. Right. We we could we could modify what what it is that it has to output in the in the program window. But yeah, where do we actually do that? Ah, oh, yeah, here. we get the p vector received messages append new message at millis at actually why is this oh at is an is is a thing here okay get it no, no, it's not. At is this. New message at milliseconds at location. And it prints out the vector P. And instead of P, we could, we could print out much more information. But that doesn't matter. The problem with web, web sockets is, at least the web socket, the way, the way the server in this earthquake server handles web sockets is that it lets them time out. If there is a, if, if, if nothing happens for several minutes, this web, web socket quietly closes and is not renewed. So while the server might be registering new earthquakes later on, might, might register new earthquake later on, if the gap between the first and the second is, or between the last we received and the next one is long enough, the WebSocket connection will just die. And that's what we need to uh, prevent. I need something um, which will um, which will help me keep it alive. So this, this is my original code. It worked practically just as well with, this, with the only difference that it only had output to the console. And I asked this, these guys to, to show me some, some fancier outputs here and he showed me with a randomized background, with background which changes color every time and messages get output here so yeah, it's just some fancy stuff I will not use anyway but it's good to see this so and we have come to the conclusion that it really times out after a certain time and then I have googled and I found these two ways how to solve it but basically that's my favorite stack or stack overflow not stack exchange I don't, I don't know how in in what to what degree a stack overflow is a service of stack exchange but these these two services stack exchange and stack overflow are clearly related stack overflow is more like more the programming thing and stack exchange is a very general thing in stack exchange you have uh, also question and answer forums about grammar and culture and 
uh, all sorts of other things uh, and stack overflow is more more like programming and hello Matty so yeah so there are, there are guys who are complaining that WebSocket connections are closing automatically building Java yeah everything is working okay only if there is no transfer between the server after a certain time the connection is closed I'm not sure who is closing the connection yeah my question now is this something that the WebSocket protocol requires and in this case Chrome browser is closing my connection or is this something that there is it's the the uh, the implementation of a WebSocket in Java he's using the jetty related or is this another problem so and they, they answer him your client wants to be able to cope with temporary network problems anyway so let's say the user closes laptop meeting hibernated simply does no temporary solution is to listen to on close events of the web socket client and when they occur set a client side timeout to reopen the connection say in a second right yeah so that's that's the best thing so and th there is a ping pong so you, you can s send pings and receive pongs or send and receive pings and pongs over the web socket but not all not all uh, clients and servers actually allow this here is someone who who tried to solve uh, to, who tried to keep the web socket connection alive by pinging uh, the server every second every second i think I'm wondering edit control frame types with their own opcodes yeah somewhere I, I can't find it now but somewhere I have read maybe it was one of these comments that uh, even if you ping the, the server every second the connection will close in some cases it, it depends on how the server is uh, defined and set up so let's assume that the server is set up uh, quite unfriendly and that it just closes the connection if, if you send nothing but just pings and pongs if you don't send any meaningful data so the, the really the way to go here is really to listen to the on close socket so if the socket connection is closed there is uh, there is an event so we have the the library for web sockets and if we look at the source code of this what sort of events the WebSocket client does? Event. So there is an event on text. It will send the message. There is the event on connect. The event on send message. The event on error and the event on countdown ledge and not on close is it how do I get the message on connect ledge countdown I think it has to do something with the countdown latch public countdown latch latch zero so uh, I think
new countdown let's one hmm WebSocket client is there something like WebSocket client void dispose anything maybe maybe there is something like dispose anything in here will be called automatically when the parent sketch shuts down well it's practically nothing on, on dispose Initiating the client connection. Well, it's easy. WebSocket client doesn't seem to have um, a thing to web server controller. WebSocket WebSocket API session void on text throws because of an error stack trace so on connect session on websocket error there is nothing really on socket error countdown latch return latch countdown latch latch countdown Sends message. I think the only thing we could we could ask this WebSocket client events is probably. So WebSocket client is an instance of the WebSocket client class. The WebSocket client class is this. The WebSocket client class has only so many methods. This is like the constructor, right? No, it's not and register method dispose this try catch I have no idea what this means WebSocket this looks this seems to be the constructor right WebSocket client client is new WebSocket client socket is this client start yeah this is probably the constructor of the of the instance so URI client upgrade request client upgrade co client connect so call request socket get latch and await and throw some error if something bad happens so and then it has public void dispose In parent sketch shuts down. This shuts down.
I don't really see anything here. Until concurrent import. Annotation WebSocket. I'm trying to to see if there is any any method or thing say, telling me that the that the um, socket connection has ended. On message, scope destroyed, what does it mean? It's something about log, isn't it? Get session. Maybe if get session doesn't return anything meaningful. Ha! Huh. Get session. Public is not connected. Yeah, is connected, is not connected. This is probably what we want. Look at this. WebSocket adapter. Jetty WebSocket API, WebSocket adapter. So do we actually use this here? WebSocket client. Here we use session websocket api session websocket api session method so we have imported this method websocket policy string upgrade response suspend token boolean is open ha i think this this is probably what we could use and void set idle time out Void disconnect, void close. Yeah, so let's see let, let's see if we can access the information of this is open. It's in the session thing. And the session thing
Oh, is private on text on connect. Session. How do I access the session of this WebSocket? WebSocket. What is it? WebSocket WebSocket client Is there a way to access the session of this? Field summary WebSocket client provides means of establishing connection. Okay. Defaults connect dump do stop I 
get policy on session closed ha the session has been closed on session closed so we could probably on session closed Oh, that's WebSocket session. Yeah, I need a WebSocket rather than a WebSocket session. But I do have a WebSocket session, WebSocket client. Connect. I have no idea how to how to get my hands on the session because on session closed needs a WebSocket session and I'm, I'm not getting I can't extract the session as an object from get state however is stopped method is stopped is stopped Ah, damn it. Do they want to tell me that I'll need to program my own WebSocket client to get this? get state get state doesn't exist what does exist tell me what does exist Stop doesn't exist. 
Of course, how, how should it? How should it exist if, if it wasn't implemented like that? All that we have as a WebSocket client is that's the constructor Send message and dispose. That's really all we can do. We can only do send message or dispose. Client event, however. Let's look at message. Public String message. Disabling WebSocket event because of an error. Print stack. Hmm. This is basically just something that this socket does when it gets a message. It, it just gives the message to its parent, which is the parent of WebSocket event is WebSocket client, I guess. Yeah, WebSocket event. Exactly. So it gives the message to its parent. Invoke parent. and message and what will it invoke will throw But maybe we can modify this. Um, maybe we can modify this thing to oh, good Java 
lib WebSocket That's bad. I was hoping I could find the library with the web sockets somewhere. There must be somewhere. I mean, so somewhere these WebSockets add-ons are installed, but I don't know. I don't know where. I guess all I can can do now is to give up and f uh, contact the maker of the WebSocket in interface for processing and uh, see if, if he can do better. Uh, we need something to prevent closing WebSockets. And since it's getting late, I'm going to end this it's very disappointing, very disappointing. I really hoped that we will find a way to get information out of this WebSocket, but it's so... It's, it's reduced to only the most basic ever functions. It doesn't even tell you whether it's in the state of... in which state it is. doesn't really tell you in which state it is. Yeah, the struggle to looking for those libraries is annoying, yeah. It is... Um, it shouldn't be much of a, an effort to... to understand this little bit more and write... write 
our own. For example, I think if we, if we write in this dispose thing something like if dispose uh, whatever um, I don't know, maybe not here, but no, not not this dispose, but give the client a method to by which it could report its state. And what what is this latch about? Maybe but I can't even access the latch, can I? I can't even oh the, the latch is public. That's the WebSocket client event. Client event. WebSocket client event. How did he make a listener? How, how does this, this little thing, make a listener like this? Void WebSocket event with a string and a message i don't i don't see this const ever constructed socket client event What if I that creates an event? This is an event like own oh, mouse click. If you choose to use it, it will be executed whenever the server sends a message.
Stop receiving messages after a while, yeah. Connect it locally, it works fine, it keeps sending mouse, but after a minute... Stop receiving messages, it looks like it gets it, but I see no message. Yeah. It was a year ago, and he didn't respond to it. Uh, looks like an abandoned project to me. I don't know whether it makes sense contacting this developer. What other options do I have? Other options would be to program to program this in Python, not in processing, but Python. Could prove difficult to To, s to send some things through the serial connection to the Arduino gadget from Python, but I think it could be solved easier than programming sockets, programming clients and sockets. I'm very disappointed that we couldn't do what we should and wanted, but it looks like the support of WebSockets is not as good as we'd need. Well, I'll, I'll keep you updated on this project. I'll see you next time. Have a good night.